Hi guys, back with another video for you today, and today I'm talking about a house called Eccentric Molecules. And now that we have Molecule 5 and Eccentric 5 launched, this is Molecule 5, this is Eccentric 5, both of these were launched this year, I figured I'd do a ranking video and tell you what my favorites are. It's interesting because also the ranking is different when it comes to the molecules and when it comes to the eccentrics. So I'm going to tell you the ranking for both, but I'm also going to tell you the house overall because some of you are familiar with the house and are familiar with the fragrances in this house, but some of you have been asking me that you're not really familiar with them and you'd like to learn uh, about them. So we're going to do all that, plus I'm going to tell you about this particular sample set which is available now at Lucky Scent, 2 mLs of each, 10 total fragrances at $30, but I am doing one set to give away to one lucky subscriber of this channel from the USA. So if you're curious to learn about eccentric molecules fragrances, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. That's right, today we're talking about eccentric molecules. Molecules 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Eccentric 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Total of 10 fragrances. And you're gonna learn all about this and how they are used and how to wear them, all that good stuff. But before we do that, if this is your first time tuning into the channel and you still haven't subscribed to the channel, please click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. Eccentric Molecules Fragrances first launched Molecule 1 back in 2006. This is Molecule 1. All the fragrances are created by Geza Schoen. He's the perfumer. He's a German perfumer. And they are all eau de toilette concentration. The fragrances all have different prices, but the first one, Molecule 1, retails for $135 as a 100 ml bottle. And both Molecule 1 and Eccentric 1, which is this bottle, retails for $135. And both of them were launched in 2006 and they're eau de toilette concentration. And then we have Molecule 2, this one right here. And this is uh, Eccentric 2, this one right here. And both of these were launched in 2008, two years after Molecule 1. And both of these suggested retail are $140 and they're all available at Lucky Scent, as mentioned. And then Molecule 3 and Eccentric 3 were launched in 2010. These are 100 ml bottle eau de toilettes for $145 each. Finally, seven years later, they took a break, I guess a pretty long break, and they launched um, Molecule 4 and Eccentric 4. As you can see, I've used a lot about of this one, and this one has been used quite a bit too. This is my second bottle because I love this one. So these were launched in 2017, and these are suggested retail $150 for 100 ml. Again, eau de toilette concentration. Lastly, and finally, they launched, as I said, Molecule 5 and Eccentric 5 this year, 2020, and these are also $150 for a 100 ml eau de toilette. Which one is my favorite? I'll, I'm gonna tell you my favorite happens to be, I've already told you actually, is Number four, Molecule 4 launched three years ago, focusing on Javanol. And Javanol is a synthetic molecule or synthetic recreation of the smell of sandalwood. And this one happens to be one of the creamiest and most warmest, uh, uh, I guess, sandalwood experience. But it's not real sandalwood, it's actually synthetic. So they're actually not using a resource from the earth, it's synthetically created. So what's great about this is the fact that they're not utilizing or consuming up all the sandalwood in the world and they have a synthetic version of it and it smells phenomenal this one smells so good so so good um, and it's uh, happens to be my favorite and i love wearing it it's it's a simplistic minimalistic fragrance to wear and you gotta love the smell of a sandalwood and this as i said is a sandalwood it's woody but it's a very creamy experience the way it uh, wears now i'm going to leave the eccentrics to uh, tell you later but as far as my favorite eccentric molecules molecule fragrance goes it's the number four focusing on javanol so my number two is molecule one this was not my number one until the, the number four came out and the reason this one's number one is because it just smells great but you know what i should say both of these fragrances number four and number one were anosmic to me when i first smelled them i guess i was anosmic to it i couldn't smell anything especially this one this one i got it uh, was sent to me by a, a fragrance loving community f f a friend he said you got to smell this it's, it's great it smells like cedar it's woody it's all that good stuff and so i got a decant and i couldn't smell a thing but you know what as my nose 
uh, started, I guess, recognizing it, I started smelling it. And finally, it became one of my favorites. And I've turned Molecule One on to so many people and they fall in love with it immediately. They like the idea of the minimalistic, um, uh, you know, simplistic kind of uh, notes. And a lot of times these fragrances, the molecules are really perfect for people that don't really like fragrances. And I love fragrances and I love these. So I love them not only to wear on their own because they make great, like I said, minimalistic, simplistic scents, but they also are great to layer with. And these, you can layer the eccentrics or you can use them to enhance other fragrances. Let's say, for example, this one uh, is perfect for citruses. I feel like it's uh, great for citruses because you can layer this one down first and then spray citruses on top. And it just kind of like boosts your citrus fragrance and makes it woody, if that makes sense. But anyway, Molecule focuses on ISOE Super, another very, very common note that's uh, used in perfumery. I feel like this is one of the most common notes in perfumery. It's always um, seen in the base notes, typically in the base notes. It's woody, and for me, it smells like a cross between cedar and sandalwood. More cedar than sandalwood. I've read the other way around, but I get more cedar here, and I get more sandalwood with the uh, Molecule 4. It's a great scent. Um, it's it's wonderful. And again, this one was the first one that kickstarted the whole uh, experience. I mean, the whole collection of fragrances. And I feel like Molecule One is probably the most popular in the collection. So this is my second favorite, with number four being my first favorite. So what's my third favorite? It happens to be. Molecule 2. So Molecule 2 focuses on Ambroxan. Here we have another very popular synthetic molecule. Ambroxan is a smell that's supposed to recreate the smell of ambergris. Ambergris is very expensive, very, very expensive. And uh, here we have a synthetic version of it. Now to me, this doesn't really smell like ambergris. Um, ambergris can get animalic to me. It has a very animalic smell. Some, some can get animalic. But this, for me, is more like a if you've smelled Sauvage from uh, Dior, you'll probably know what Ambroxan smells like because it has a very big dose of it. Uh, and uh, this one actually, for me, I feel like it's a scent, it's very minimalist, minimalistic. In fact, it's probably the most minimalistic out of the entire collection. It's the least smelling fragrance. Most of the time people say it smells like alcohol. But no, I get really, really uh, light touches of woody things in there. A lot of dry and dusty and wood chippings kind of experience with slightly aquatic and slightly ambery touches. So, but it's also very, very light and minimalistic. So just be, be warned. And this actually makes a great, great um, a fragrance to layer with. And you can spray this one under uh, the citruses, like I said, I was doing, uh, I was telling you about uh, with Molecule One, and I feel like that'll work great. But this actually is perfect for everything, I think. Um, since it doesn't have really have a smell to me, it, it can be mixed with a lot of different things. I feel like this is perfect for floor, floral fragrances, citruses, other woody fragrances, uh, ambers, patchouli, everything like that. I feel like you can actually do and uh, experience wonderful. So, great thing about the fragrances here, if there's not too much smell, it's perfect for layering. If there's a really strong smell, which are the, the last two I'm gonna talk to you about because they have the strongest, most intense smell, on their original form, uh, it's less layering you can do because you're gonna be like, um, you know, contrasting with the smell of the other perfume. But I feel like this is perfect layering tool with a lot of different smells. The best one out of all of the fragrances to layer with, it's Molecule 2. Anyway, this one uh, was launched in 2008, uh, two years after Molecule 1. My fourth favorite is Molecule 3, focusing on vetiviral acetate. So this one, I feel like is a very strong smell on its own. And vetiviral acetate is a synthetic recreation of the smell of vetiver. And to me, it smells very pungent. It's like a very pungent, rooty, earthy vetiver smell. Um, very, very strong. And this one happens to be uh, my fourth favorite because you're thinking, I love vetiver, and why is he ranking it at number four? To me, I like the eccentric molecule fragrances uh, for their minimalistic uh, experience. And for me, this is not very minimalistic. In fact, number five is not minimalistic at all. And it's, a really, it's like a fragrance on its own. Um, so if that makes sense, I don't rank the eccentric molecules fragrances for an actual fragrance. Once I get to the eccentrics from the eccentric molecules rather than the molecules, then I don't 
think of them as, as the same way as the molecules, if that makes sense to you guys. So this one I feel like is a complete fragrance on its own because it just smells like a vetiver fragrance with citruses and things like that going on around it with it. Even though none of that stuff is listed, it, it smells like a real finished product. That's what I'm trying to say. But it's, it's, it's an overall great fragrance. A lot of people tell me they do wear this on their own. It smells great on them. It also has great longevity for an eau de toilette and a sim simplistic molecule of vetiviral acetate. And I feel like it's a complete, fr uh, you know, finished product on its own. Now this one I feel like is not so easy to layer with. You can probably layer it with other vetiver fragrances to kind of like, um, enhance the life of the other vetiver fragrance if you have one that doesn't last. But as far as layering it, you have to kind of try and experience what you can layer with and see if it'll complement one another. Anyway, this is Molecule 3 from Eccentric Molecules. This was launched in 2010, my fourth favorite. And the last but not least favorite is Molecule 5, the last one that was launched. And I feel like this one is the strongest of the smells. It smells very, very pungent. It's Cashmirin. And uh, Cashmirin, I feel like, is a very popular note. I think a a lot of these are very popular, that's why it's here. Although I don't see vetiviral acetate listed in fragrances much, but I feel like they just say vetiver instead of vetiviral acetate. But I feel like all these notes are popular. I'm thinking number six might be Calone. I don't know, I'm guessing. We'll see. But Cashmirin is used a lot in perfumery as a base note. It's a woody, ambery, slightly animalic kind of a, a, a note. Um, that's used, that's synthetically used in perfumes. And here, we have it in its most minimalistic form. It's just the actual cashmere on its own as a fragrance. And this one actually, I feel like is very um, earthy and it smells like very, very rooty. Like it's the root and the earth down there under the earth. Not dirty smelling, but just earthy smelling. And to me, I get mushrooms with it. I don't know if you guys have ever experienced it, uh, but it, it's strong. It's a very strong smell. It a little goes a long way. A lot of people say it's a bit animalic. I could see that. But to me, I don't get like animalic likes of it or castorium or something like that. I get more earth, like deep under there, like just the dirt, the earth. That's why I say it smells like mushrooms. So that's cashmere and it's my, my number fifth favorite of the collection. And again, I, it's the same reason as the vetroviral acetate of uh, eccentric molecules, molecule three. The smell is very strong. You don't need anything else with it. It's a very, very strong smell on its own. Whereas uh, one, two, and four were more minimalistic, four being the least of the three, with one and two being the least, and then two being the least of the, the minimalism, uh, the minimalistic experience. Uh, I feel like the one, two, and uh, four are the ones that you can layer perfectly with other notes, but uh, three and five, I feel like it's so strong on its own, um, it's really difficult to layer. But you can you can figure it out. You can play around if you have these. I feel like you can do that with the sample set that I've mentioned. Uh, as I said, I have one to give away, and it's all 10 fragrances, and they are available at Lucky Send. I do have a link in the info box. So what happens with the eccentric fragrances from eccentric molecules? So we have the molecules that I spoke to you about, where, which are the minimalistic one-note fragrances uh, of the synthetic molecules. Now we have those moved into the eccentrics and complementing other notes that work great with them, and that's what they have with the fragrances. And my favorite happens to be number five <laughs> go figure my least favorite molecule is five my most favorite eccentric is five and what i like about this one it's very very complex it's so complex there's so much going on with it and i feel like it's so complete and so great so long lasting it's a very fresh and refreshing kind of a green woody citrusy uh you know leafy kind of herbal aromatic fragrance which i love with this one you have lots of bergamot it's like a very bergamotty fragrance. There's lots of juniper. Cashmirin is here, as I said. Cashmirin is the note here, the main player here, and moving into the fragrance here. Then you have cypress, rosemary, bay laurel, ISOE super from molecule one is moved in here, and then ambroxan from molecule two has been brought in here as well, and a lot of other notes with citruses and things like that. It's a great, great scent. I feel like this is going to be perfect for summer wear. In fact, I might actually feature it in some of my summer lists because it smells so good. And uh, it's just a complete finished, juicy, citrusy, woody, herbal, aromatic fragrance experience. I think there's also some fig leaves in here that I really like. Just the whole thing. It smells like leaves and citruses and woods and and I, 
I feel like this is definitely Geza Schoen's um, signature style when he does make fragrances outside of the molecules. So that's my favorite. Uh, my second favorite eccentric happens to be eccentric four, and as you can see, I've worn a lot of it. Uh, this is my favorite. These are my favorites, and I've, this is my second bottle of the molecule four. I'm, a, I'm a, at the end of my first bottle of Molecule 4 and I just love the way this one. This one actually seems a lot complex as well. Um, it's funny, what I've experienced is they got more complex as the numbers grew higher. So number 5 is the most complex, number 4 is the second most complex and uh, I love that about it. So th this one has juniper as well but you've got lots of grapefruit so it's very juicy and grapefruity. There's galbanum, mastic resin, rosy uh, and a lot more other notes in here to make a very fresh and refreshing uh, great summer wearing experience, uh, fragrance wearing experience. Again, I feel like Geza Schoen's signature style is here. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a fresh, leafy, resinous, fruity kind of a, a herbal aromatic fragrance experience. And once again, I've smelled Geza Schoen's fragrances all over and I feel like I can pick out his style, especially here with the eccentrics. If I was to smell these blind, I can totally say that okay, this is definitely a Geza Schoen creation. And it, it smells great. This is number four. Used to be my favorite eccentric, but now, as I said, number five is my favorite eccentric. So what's my third favorite eccentric? Well, we're going backwards. That's exactly what's happened here. As I said, it's gotten more more complex as the numbers grew higher and it started off very minimalistic. So number three is my, and here again, they're using that vetoviral acetate. Uh, I didn't mention it in here, but there is this Javanol in Eccentric 4. But here they're using that vetoviral acetate and they're complementing it with other notes. And what they have here is lime, ginger, green peppercorn, cedar, tea, and some other notes. And this one actually I find really well. If you like the smell of this, um, but definitely this is a more complex version of it because they're adding those additional notes. And if you ever have any issues with the longevity, I would, you know, layer this one down and then spray this one on top. That's how I do. Usually when I'm layering fragrances, I like to spray the more dense fragrance and the bottom. Another wonderful creation, eccentric number three, but I feel like the closer we get to eccentric one, the more minimalistic it's going to be. And I'm not sure if uh, it's something that uh, Geza Schoen has noticed with these fragrances and they've decided to make them more complex as they're adding new e uh, eccentric molecules fragrances. But this one's complex enough. I feel like two and one are the least complex, but with what's going on here with the vetroviral acetate and the other notes, I feel like it's a great wearing experience. Anyway, that's eccentric three. Fourth favorite is number two. Two. It's eccentric two, and here we have the ambroxan used with vetiver, muscone, orris, elderflower, and it does say vetiver, so I'm not sure if they're using vetiviral acetate or real vetiver, but. This one seems a little more musky and clean, uh, not so complex, as I said. It's more minimalistic here with lighter touches of the notes rather than in-your-face touches. Three to five are more in-your-face. Here, it's more subdued experience. And I feel like that's exactly what you have with Molecule 2 to begin with. So, to give you a complex version of Molecule 2, you're still going to get those subtleties, but there is some actual essences in there, just more subtle uh, versions of them. Anyway, this one's great. It does have a little bit of a vetiver touch, but definitely musky, the muscone note, slightly powdery as well, but it's wonderful. Just very minimalistic, as I said. And last but not least, it's Eccentric 1. It's funny how this uh, ranking worked out. Um, eccentric 1 is the most minimalistic to me uh, out of the whole lot, as I said. It utilizes ISOE Super, and ISOE Super, remember, is this uh, this woody note that smells like cedar sandalwood. But this one also has some lime, some iris, some pink pepper. Again, it's not overly minimalistic, but still it is. I feel like it's just light, it's just the way Molecule 1 works, but now they've just added a little bit of uh, some complementing notes to work with the Molecule, um, to work with the Eccentric 1. Again, if you like this and you feel like it needs to be boosted up, uh, layer some of this down and then spray this one on top and then check that out, because that's what I like to do. But 
I like to experiment with the molecules with other fragrances just because it's really nice to do that and I actually have a whole video on layering or intensifying your fragrances on the channel so if you're curious uh, to find out more about these fragrances and how to use those uh, combinations as I was telling you you should definitely watch that video anyway thanks so much for watching today if you want to participate in our giveaway for this sample set this is what I'll be sending you guys and this is how it is and this is available for sale on Lucky Sense for $30 for 10 samples. I feel like if you're new to this collection and you want to explore, it's a great way to explore. Just keep in mind, you might be, you might be a Nosmic to one, two, and four. I was, in fact, I'm still a little Nosmic to number two, but I feel like it's just the way it, it, the fragrance is. It's just not a very strong smell but it just works great with um, other notes, as, as I've been saying. But I feel like this is a great way to explore the collection and to see what this, uh, the notes smell like as uh, molecules and then what the notes smell like as eccentrics. So check that out at the link and also to participate in the giveaway for that sample set, which I'll be sending to you. And to participate in the giveaway, let me know from watching this video which molecule sounds great to you and which eccentric sounds great to you. Please put that down on your state and please make sure you're subscribed to the channel so that you can qualify. Other than that, guys, thanks so much for watching this video today. It's a long video, but this was great for me to do this, to rank these fragrances and to tell you which my, my favorites are, and maybe perhaps those will be your favorites as well. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Otherwise, please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. <music>